this is Marlene Rabu from uh, Batam. Uh, I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Sela Sazakau from uh, Batukola. I only listen to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Vale and I'm working at Golden Grove Resort and I love listening to Gold FM because it plays a really wide range of classic hits. I'm Saini Sakio from Kashmir Lotoka. I like Gold FM, but only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Jackie Spade. This is FBC News. Tonight, a shopkeeper fighting for her life after being stabbed. One dead, five badly hurt in road accident. And government completes needs assessment following tropical cyclone Winston. A shopkeeper was stabbed in Kinoy and Asinu earlier today. The woman was found by a customer who went inside the shop to find her covered in blood. Ali Kimbia has the details. The female shopkeeper was found inside e-store and bakery in Kinoya just before midday. Numaya Tambuere had gone into e-store to buy bread when he found the woman. I entered the shop and I was so shocked to see that the woman was lying on the floor and I cannot even see her two eyes because there was blood all over. So we called the police and she was rushed to the hospital. When FBC News arrived, the shop had been condoned off Residents and neighboring shop owners were still grappling with what happened. Police spokesperson Anna Naisoro confirms an investigation has begun. According to Tambuere, the woman had extensive injuries. From what I saw when I entered the shop, I can see stabbing wounds on top of her head and the side of her eyes. And it also looked like someone punched her several times on the face. The Fiji police force is appealing with people to come forward if they have any information, Ali Kimbia, FBC News. A man is dead after the rental car he was traveling in was involved in an accident at Namandi Heights in Tamavo Suva this afternoon. Police spokesperson Ananai Soro confirms the passenger died at the scene while five others are being treated at the CWM hospital. It is believed the rental car collided with the truck. An investigation is now underway. The post-disaster needs assessment following T.C. Winston is complete. Minister for National Disaster Management, Inia Seruratu, will table a report in the next parliament sitting. Ali Kimbia has more. The country's post-disaster needs of the tropical cyclone Winston have been identified and will be made public during discussions in parliament. The disaster needs assessment has been completed. It will be tabled to government uh, in the next cabinet meeting and then it will be available to all of you. Uh, for your uh, information. Disaster Management Minister Inia Siriratu confirms relief efforts are concentrating on key areas while less affected families will have to wait for parliament. And of course we are getting uh, uh, some uh, uh, containers as well from abroad and we are pushing that out, out to the communities. Again we are just concentrating on what's uh, uh, the priority now, uh, education facilities like well, uh, health facilities and the continuation of government services. Uh, the rest of it is the post-disaster needs assessment and the recovery framework. Meanwhile, the minister today tested out the new cement block-making machines which can be used for rebuilding works in rural and maritime communities. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Trauma counselling for children is a priority for those at the helm of serving in communities ravaged by tropical cyclone Winston. Red Cross Fiji Director General Felipe Nainoda says they have been pouring resources and manpower into adequately reaching out to those whose lives matter most. Madim Bolaitamano with this report. Identifying the great need to adequately address trauma counselling for children in the aftermath of tropical cyclone Winston. Children are extremely sensitive and even uh, times like this when something happens out of the ordinary they, they, they run, they leave uh, and go. We, uh, often don't uh, uh, consider the impact uh, of what this uh, uh, cyclone or the event of the cyclone did to children. Nainoda says they have been empowering their volunteers thanks to the support of their New Zealand counterparts. 
and we are very thankful to New Zealand Red Cross who sent in a delegate, uh, an expert in this area, who has been training our volunteers. So our volunteers are now going out uh, with this ability to listen and uh, of course provide support and referrals to the Ministry of Health. Meanwhile, works in the Western Division continues as volunteers tend to areas that have been ravaged by tropical cyclone Winston. Part of what we are looking at now is actually to see what we can give back to volunteers. How can we say thank you to them? And something more concrete. We actually are now saying to our volunteers, you know, if you are um, unemployed, if you join Fiji Red Cross, then we will help you so that you become employable. The Red Cross will be working closely with the Fiji Alliance for Mental Health as it looks to get psychologists to help those suffering from post-tropical cyclone Winston trauma. Madhim Bolitamana, FPC News. Members of the European Union today marked Europe Day, the anniversary of a declaration in 1950 that launched the road to one of the largest international blocs in the world. It's also one of a number of celebrations to foster unity among Europeans. Here at home, the celebration means more. It was on this day, 1950, that Robert Schuman, one of the founding fathers of the European Union, called on the nations of Europe to unite and render war unthinkable. Europe Day not only celebrates its own achievements, but strong partnerships around the world. And Fiji and the Pacific are important countries for the EU, so we take the opportunity really to make people aware of what the European Union and Fiji and the European Union and the Pacific are, are doing together. Jacob says the EU is an important trading partner, a reliable investor and a loyal ally in a fight against climate change. He adds that since Europe Day last year, the partnership between Fiji and the EU has strengthened further. Since the return to parliamentary democracy in Fiji in September 2014, our relations have become uh, ever, ever closer. And uh, since uh, Europe Day last year, as you say, there was a visit of our uh, Commissioner for Development and International Cooperation, Nevin Mimitsa. He came here, uh, he signed a cooperation agreement with Prime Minister Bainamarama for development cooperation between now and 2020. The EU is a political economic union of 28 member states with an estimated population of over 508 million. Formal Europe Day celebrations are planned in Suva tomorrow, followed by a three-day exhibition to make people aware of all EU's development projects. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Coming up on FBC News, FMPF fraud still under investigation. My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Ghana Town. I listen to Mario on the traffic jam every afternoon. Hi, my name is Salah, I live in Asinu, Today FM rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Lonila, I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM, it rocks in Rakiraki. I'm Mary from Mandela, I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. We love listening. Police investigators are still gathering statements and documents into the alleged fraud by Fiji National Provident Fund employees. FMPF terminated a staff member last week for his alleged involvement in the cashing of members' checks while the other under investigation. Information is collected. The two suspects will be brought in for questioning. The staff allegedly cash members' checks worth around $20,000 that was paid under the Tropical Cyclone Winston Natural Disaster Assistance. FMPF Chief Operating Officer Chochi Karoy says they can't comment while police investigations are ongoing. Red Cross and Global Compassion today received more than $40,000 each from Pacific Energy. Red Cross Director Felipe Nainova says this is a timely assistance as they need to continue to meet the needs of people after Tropical Cyclone Winston. Well, Compassion Director Lysiasa Chiochi says this financial assistance will go directly towards medical assistance and other community services post tropical cyclone winter. We will uh, launch this campaign uh, and that will give the opportunity to the public um, to be able to donate uh, easily uh, through 
buying fuel for their car, for their needs, for their brush cutter, uh, for anything, uh, and knowing that two cents per litre of what they're paying will be given back to the two NGOs, Red Cross and Global Compassion. Valette says Pacific Energy's relief drive continues with its refuel, restore and rebuild drive as part of its rehabilita rehabilitation process post-tropical cyclone Winston. The fast-growing Snowy House Dessert Cafe under the Grace Road franchise opened its new outlet at Mid-City in the heart of Suva today. The Grace Road Group is engaged in establishing a culture of a healthy daily meal along with a nutritional dessert. The newly opened Snowy House in Mid-City is set to provide classic Korean desserts, namely the snow. We provide the customer all-in-one dessert. It's like a niche market. It's an new in Fiji. You can find a coffee shop in Fiji. Yes, we're selling the coffee, but we are not a coffee shop. We're selling the cookie and the brownie, but we are not a bakery shop, you know. We do whole in one provide all new type of the dessert. Kim says their desserts maintain balance in both taste and nutrition. The ingredients include many types of homemade fruit syrups, red beans, organic cassava and brown rice, grown at the Grace Road Farm in Navua. Most important thing is we create a new brand. It's born in Fiji. Like, okay, McDonald's, the big, you know, like a franchise company is international, it's a global, you know, big giant company. But Snowy House is born in Fiji, created by the, our Grace Road. So we want to keep create our brand in Fiji to the people. Apart from Snowy House dessert cafes, other outlets include Grace Road Kitchen, Noodle Story and Awesome Grill, with plans for more to be added. The new dessert cafe is the sixth outlet in Fiji, with plans for another in Lautoka next month. Going back to our earlier story in the bulletin, the government has revealed that there is a conflict of interest between shareholders of data bureau and businesses which use its services. The Attorney General has released a letter to the Association of Banks in which the government reveals that the chair of the Association of Banks has reacted, while has reacted negatively to the scrapping of data bureau, is in fact a shareholder of the data bureau itself. In this letter to the Association of Banks Chair Kevin McCarthy, Attorney General Ayaz Sayed Kayum says the claims and objections of the association can't be viewed as impartial. McCarthy is a BIF chair and a shareholder and director of BSP Life, which owns shares in the Data Bureau. Sayed Kayum says in his letter that this interest has not been declared and that McCarthy has a professional and personal conflict of interest. The minister goes on to detail all the benefits of the Fair Reporting of Credit Act and how the operations of Data Bureau had been running unchecked and unregulated. He then brings up the issue that consumers may not be aware of who owned Data Bureau, interestingly. It belongs to a select few insurance companies and BSP Life. The letter names Credit Corporation, Carlyle Limited linked to Dominion Insurance, Tower Insurance and BSP Life. These owners are also clients of the Data Bureau, regularly using its credit reporting services. Kevin McCarthy, as chair of the Banking Association, has threatened that the scrapping of data records could very well lead to an increase in interest rates. Farzana Nisha, FBC News. Farzana Nisha joins us live now. Farzana, I understand you've been trying to get responses from some of the banks. Tell us, how did that go? Jackie, Kevin McCarthy could not be reached today to verify the alleged lack of consultation with other banks and his non-declaration of interest as a shareholder of the Data Bureau. Jackie. Well, thanks so much for that, Farzana. Turning to world news now, three shootings in three separate cities, all by the same gunman, have left three people dead in the U.S. state of Maryland. Authorities say a man they arrested is a former law enforcement officer. This report from TVNZ. New tonight, caught on tape, the final moments as police surround and arrest a federal police officer accused of going on a murderous rampage that left three people dead in 24 hours. Watch again. The suspect walks to the car. Police ram his vehicle. Guns drawn. He gives up without a fight, ending a violent day.
who's been a shooting at the mall. We're trying to set up a perimeter. We're looking out for a gray silver car. 11.15 a.m. with thousands of customers at the Montgomery Mall. Shots ring out in the parking lot. A woman hit. Two men trying to help her shot as well. All rushed to the hospital where one of the Good Samaritans later dies. Stunned shoppers trapped inside. Nordstrom roll down their metal doors and on two sides and they locked us in place. At 11.50 a.m., 10 miles away, another fatal shooting. A woman gunned down near this giant supermarket. Police suspect the same man is responsible, identified as Eulalio Tordillo, an officer with the Federal Protective Service. One reason they're suspicious, he is believed to have shot and killed his estranged wife at this local high school just after 4.30 p.m. Thursday. We are looking at uh, whether last night's shooting in Prince George's County and these shootings were committed by the same suspect. Homeland Security officials tell us that Tordillo was placed on administrative leave, his badge and gun taken, after a court order to stay away from his wife was issued in March. In the tense hours before his arrest, government offices and local schools went on lockdown. But the violence ended without incident. He came out of the vehicle with his hands up within about five minutes. That car taken away tonight. It's time for sports now and here's Jamie with the latest. Thank you, Jackie, and good evening. After the break, Fijiana ready to prove its worth in France. And Fiji Car Club to hold race this weekend. This and more coming up. Bula FM number 2 and seri. The Vodafone Fiji 7 side had its first training run in London today in preparation for the Paris 7s. Coach Ben Ryan was pleased with the first run and took to social media with this message on Twitter. Good first day in camp, the start of a big final finish in the World Rugby 7 Series. Attack the back-to-back -back series title, no other. Meanwhile, Sami Soni Viriviri has joined the Vodafone Fiji 7s camp in London, while Chosua Tuisova, Waisea and Adelevo and Leon and Akarao are expected to join camp later tonight. Before departing for the final two tournaments, Captain Osea Kolenisao had this message for Fiji 7s fans. Uh, thank you to the fans and uh, the families, the public for your support. All we ask is uh, your continued support and uh, the praise for the team. Fiji is pooled with Samoa, Scotland and Wales in Paris. Meanwhile, New Zealand 7s coach Gordon Tijens is hopeful his team will click in the Paris 7s this weekend. New Zealand is pooled with Russia, Portugal and Kenya at the Paris 7s, which you can catch live on FBC TV this weekend. Suva currently leads the Skipper Cup points table after the second round of matches. The capital city side has nine points from two wins. Nandi and Namosi also have nine points but have fallen short on points difference. Newly promoted Malolo is on fourth after beating Madhuata and Tavua consecutively. Meanwhile, defending champions Nandronga is in fifth place with six points. Another round of Skipper Cup matches will be played this weekend. The Telecom Fijiana 7 side has one more week to prepare before heading to France for the last tournament of the Women's World Series. The team hopes to finish strong before heading to the Olympics in August. Vasil Prasad reports. Pushing the limit, the Fijiana team players working hard to make the cut into the final squad for the front sevens. Gearing up for this uh, last uh, leg and uh, yeah, everybody is uh, back onto it, uh, giving the 100% and uh, selection wise. Is, I guess best it's a really tough for us players fighting for our sport for this uh, last leg in uh, France. Load will be on the experienced players to perform in the last leg after the Fijianas failed to live up to expectations earlier in the season. We know that uh, our performance from the last two legs has, has been dropped uh, compared for the last uh, legs that we've been through. And uh, we, we know that it's an, uh, 
uh, a hard uh, edge for us again to walk towards it. The Fijiana team is ranked eighth as of now, but they have a chance to improve before the Olympic Games. It's been a uh, pressure for us, uh, especially the old players, uh, the senior players, to to maintain our performance and to maintain for the thing, for the tasks that is uh, ahead of us for this France leg and for the Rio Olympics, even though uh, well, well, the, our performance has been fluctuating. Fiji is grouped with Australia, France and Ireland in the France Sevens. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Children living in cyclone-ravaged areas around the country will be recipients of brand new sporting equipment. This is thanks to the Australian NGO Spirit of Sharing that has been working with government over the past 15 years. Madhi Mbole Tamana with the story. President Chochi Konrati was in Lotoka today to receive two containers worth of sporting equipment that will be distributed by the Ministry of Youth and Sports around the country. It's all sports equipment. There's uh, kitchen, cup kitchen cupboards, there's uh, towels and linen and bed sheets and knives and forks and farming tools that are going to the people who were affected most by the cyclone. So these are three containers that uh, we've come together today to have a little uh, ceremony and a thank you about uh, have arrived and uh, we'll be going out to the people who are most uh, most in need. Minister for Youth and Sport Lisa Nia Tuitubo says the contribution will go a long way in providing Fijians affected by tropical cyclone Winston to enjoy the equipment. And we have an uh, application from the uh, Ministry of Education about damage, uh, all the damaged coolies that uh, all this equipment will go through. And uh, with the help of uh, our Fiji Sports Commission, uh, National Sports Commission uh, staff, that they go around contact uh, trainers for trainers and all those uh, issues will also assist the youths by having this equipment with them and training as well. The equipment will be distributed by the officials from the Ministry of Youth and Sports in the coming days. Madhya Mbalai Tamana, FBC News. The Fiji Car Club will hold its second drag race of the year this weekend. Tropical cyclones Winston and Zena delayed previously scheduled events, but executives are hopeful of getting things back on track once again. Rohit Deo reports. The Fiji Car Club has only held one race this year, but it has high hopes of increasing the numbers in the coming months. Club executive Dr. Amit Prasad says things have not gone their way in the past few months. This year has not been too fortunate for races out there because of, uh, first of all, Cyclone Winston came and that put us uh, behind on our track. Uh, and then Cyclone Zina came, that put us behind. And the last race that we took, um, we, we ran into unfavorable weather conditions. Dr. Prasad says the club operates according to the demands of its members and will be introducing new categories in this weekend's race. We're hoping to introduce uh, new categories, which is the hybrid category. Uh, so we, we're giving chance for the hybrid cars to show how good they are with their timings. And also, uh, we're trying to promote the lady drivers to come and take part. Oromal drag race begins at 10 a.m. this Sunday, the Nanuku Airship in Pacific Harbour. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. The Lautoka football side has increased its lead on the Vodafone Premier League points table by four points after a one all draw against Nandi yesterday. The Blues have played five matches so far and are on ten points while Lambasa is in second spot with six points after three matches. Suva is the only team with a 100% winning record and lie on third spot with six points after playing two games. Meanwhile, in a doubleheader this Sunday at Nasori's Ratu Dakamau Park, Suva plays Nandi at 1 p.m., while at 3 p.m., Rewa hosts Nandunga. Nandi is the defending champions of the National League competition. Meanwhile, in the English Premier League football competition this morning, Arsenal and Manchester City played to a two-all draw. In other matches from the EPL today, Southampton beat Tottenham Hotspurs 2-1, while Liverpool defeated Watford 2-0. That is your sports for this evening. It's back to Jackie now with Bella. <laughs> Blue Sky Pacific Steel has dropped the price of its steel products by $100 per tonne for a three-month period, despite the increase in world price of steel. Blue Sky Pacific Steel has introduced this scheme with the view to helping supplement the tropical cyclone Winston recovery efforts. The company says it hopes this initiative will assist the government in helping families who have been adversely affected by the TC Winston. 
Fiji's construction sector has seen a boom, according to figures from the Fiji Bureau of Statistics. Over 400 building permits for construction work were issued in the December quarter of 2016, valued at $67.6 million. Building permits issued for factories, commercial, education, hotels and religious buildings contributed significantly to the non-privileged dwellings component. Apart from this, 129 completion certificates with a value of $16.8 million were also issued. Cloudy weather condition prevailed over most parts of the country today with periods of rain in some places. Looking at the temperatures, 29 degrees recorded in three centres today with Lombasa and Savo Savo finishing the day at 31 degrees. Tomorrow's forecast is for mostly fine conditions over most places with a chance of afternoon showers in Suva and Savo Savo. Brief showers over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands, elsewhere mainly fine. Southeast winds 10 to 15 knots, moderate seas, moderate southeast swells, that's the further outlook. Recapping the main stories for tonight, a shopkeeper from Kinoi Nasino is in hospital after being stabbed inside a shop today. One person is dead and five are hospitalized after a road accident in Tamavo Suva. And Attorney General Ayo Said Kayum says there is conflict of interest between data bureau and lending institutions. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Results from last week's poll question, we had asked, is it right for Sadalpa to try and bring back the GCC? The responses were pretty close, with 55% saying yes and 45% saying no. This week we are asking, do you support government's move to remove all credit history stored by Data Bureau? To answer, visit our FBC website. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. Good night. Radio Fiji ki सुंदर सुंदर यादों का खजाना एकदम बचपन के दिन याद करा देते हैं हमारा नाम जोनी नाइडो है हम रहता है मलोरो में और हम टैक्सी ड्राइवर है हम सब टाइम अपन टैक्सी में रेडियो फिजी सुनता प्रोग्राम हम सिंगाटोका के हैं हमारा नाम है रोजी हम यहां पे रेडियो फिजी टू सुनता राम राम मैं रेमस प्रसाद बोलता हूं तो बता मैं कोई रहता हूं मैं जब ही सुना रेडियो फिजी टू ही सुनता हूं रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन